Today on our final episode of Beyond the Report, we meet author and Texas Tech University PhD candidate, Jessica Smith. She's lived all over the U.S. and has experienced all forms of sexual harassment. Lubbock is no exception to that. Now she strives to hold a mirror up to society and highlight the microaggressions of sexual harassment that lead to much larger problems. You know, sexism is everywhere, right? Sexism is in the air we breathe. It just manifests differently or people feel more comfortable in different places, maybe. I was surprised when I got to Texas Tech, maybe how foregrounded some of the commentary was. During her time working towards her PhD at Texas Tech, she's dealt with a number of sexist remarks from colleagues and even some professors. She recalls one incident that vividly sticks out in her memory. I wanted to start a graduate run reading series and I went to the dean and asked for money and I prepared what I thought was a very professional proposal and clearly laid out what I wanted. And when I was granted this money, more than one male PhD student, and one professor as well, made comments to me about, um, well, what did you wear to meet the dean, who's also a man? You gotta teach me your tricks, your, what kind of mascara you wear, things like that, that they thought were funny. Three or four years prior, I probably would have kind of laughed along with them as a way to be part of the club that they were the presidents of. According to a new survey, 81% of women have experienced sexual harassment. This new survey defines sexual harassment in much broader terms. It incorporates behaviors like cyber harassment and even catcalling. With catcalling, I'm not really sure how to explain to someone who doesn't understand why it's damaging, why it's damaging. I like to run. Lubbock is a lot more sparse. When I lived in a dense city, you can just pop into a store, grab someone's forearm if something happens to you. I mean, I got catcalled more in New York City than here, but here, I'm alone and there's no one nearby and it tends to linger longer and it tends to escalate faster. Jessica has formed a community of artists and yogis to surround herself with. When she's not working towards her PhD, she's teaching classes at the yoga stand. She even got married and is expecting a baby, a little boy. By the time this story airs, she'll probably have already given birth. She's at the yoga stand now, folding fresh towels for her upcoming class. The owner's tiny chihuahua jumps into the hot piles for warmth. Oh, oh, oh. Makes me more excited to have a child. <laughs> I got him, I got him. I'll take him out front, yeah. Um, I write a lot about power dynamics between men and women and about intimate partner violence. A lot of the inspiration comes from personal experience. Right before coming to Tech, she had just left an abusive relationship. He was a fellow writer, which helped build the false narrative of their love story. That eventually came crashing down when she faced the reality of what she was living with. When I did come out of it, and I was in therapy, and I started doing a lot of research to kind of try and figure out how this had happened to me, I think in doing that research, it helped me to realize that there is a nexus between what we're talking about every day, sexual harassment, microaggressions, and things like domestic violence, intimate partner violence, sex trafficking, right? I think Claire V. Watkins said, like, you have to do the little things, you have to see someone as inhuman before you can take those next more violent steps. And so I just saw the ways that like he and I had both been bred by the culture in some ways. Watch Jessica's full story in all episodes of Beyond the Report at beyondthereportlbk.com. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Ashley Cox. This season of Beyond the Report brought to you by Texas Tech Physicians Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology.